Manipur, you were there recently, sir. Uh, what's the update from the ground? When can we expect normalcy? The Home Minister was there yesterday and there was an incident. Uh, clearly, it's taking some time to establish a trust and be peace. What is your assessment? Right. So, over the last four or five days, I think we have had sporadic incidents of violence uh, firing from both sides. And if you recall, after the initial two to three days, that is between third to fifth, where the violence levels were maximum, between sixth to twenty-fifth, things were sort of uh, the violence levels were reduced. But then you saw a sudden spurt in violence, and uh, some of the things which are currently happening in Manipur, from the reports I get, is the involvement of uh, people who are blocking the security forces when you go or our columns when you want to get deployed or you want to move in response to a situation between the two communities uh, there have been incidents of firing the weapons which have been uh, the weapons which have gone out of the establishment now these weapons are available to people and this is where even some of the village defense forces or village defense committees, they are in possession of these arms. Uh, we have had some cases of mass protest, gatherings, so this is something which we have requested we must try and avoid because the, I mean that is where the spark can ignite. And uh, as far as our work there is concerned, uh, we are dominating especially those areas where both the communities are living together so that you have a physical separation and you prevent a direct physical contact between both sides. Besides, we are also helping in keeping the two main roads which lead into Manipur, NH37 and NH2, entirely open that the flow of essential commodities continues. We well, can never be helpful if uh, people at large are militarized. You said that these weapons were looted. How do you get them back, General Sir? Uh, so we are following a two-pronged approach. One is uh, there's appeal which has been made. Uh, I heard that when the Home, Honorable Home Minister appealed to people to return the weapons by a certain uh, time frame. Yeah. And second is we are also carrying out combing operations uh, based on specific uh, areas so that these weapons which are presently at large uh, you get them back. So that is the R. So are you saying that some amount of force is going to be applied if people are not going to uh, adhere to the appeal that has been put out and they continue to hold on to their weapons? You said combing operations. Will that entail yeah, yeah. So perhaps those, confrontation? So those elements who are not supposed to be in possession of those weapons uh, if will required, be dealt with harshly because yes, that's what the Union Home Minister has uh, said. Absolutely. So it has to be a mix of both. Uh, if people, uh, I mean, if people who are not supposed to have weapons, if they're having weapons and then using this to create uh, unpleasant situations and such as this, uh, if required, the force will be used. Well, that's a, that's a big statement coming from uh, the army chief. Um, now, I just want to ask you, because you say that these people, so the state chief minister, Mr. N. Biren Singh, had blamed the violence on kooky insurgent groups. Remember, he had said this recently. On May 28, the tweet by Spear Corps Indian Army revealed intercepts of transcripts of plans by insurgents to use human shields while attacking villages and security forces. But the CDS has said that insurgency has nothing to do with the Manipur violence. Now, why is there so much confusion about who these individuals are? Uh, you've been there. What is your assessment? as to who is to blame. Are they insurgents or are they not insurgents? You know, I would mention here and I would like to state that uh, the current situation that we are confronting with in Manipur is that of uh, ethnic clashes between two communities. Hmm. Now, why? What is the you know, history of it is a very detailed uh, issue which we don't have time to discuss. And the current situation is a manifestation of law and order. So as far as the military deployment is concerned, 
Uh, it is to assist the state administration in restoring law and order, restoring peace, restoring normalcy. So that is what we are very clear in our mind as to what our role is. As far as you mentioned of some incidents, so there is also this challenge of misinformation of narratives which are coming out from both sides. Now that is another issue which we need to be careful about. Uh, where there was preponderance of the other community, we had to evacuate them, take them to safer places. So this is a huge number. This, all this happened within the first two days. We also had close to 21,000 uh, people there who took shelter uh, in our operating bases, in our army as well as Assam Rifle, uh, you know, post. And this, we looked after their administration, their well-being, rations, food, medical and what have you. So I would say our response to what happened, uh, I would call it very prompt, very effective. And I think that was what was instrumental in largely bringing the situation under immediate control in the first couple of days. And your second question I... was AFSPA. In Manipur, AFSPA has been scaled down. Do you think a time has come to review that decision? Well, uh, when you look at the security situ situation, this is only one aspect, what currently is happening. But you'll have to look at certain other factors before we take a call. And I'm sure, uh, you know, if there is a, uh, I've been looking at examining all these factors, conditions, including, there are a number of other issues. I'm sure at the right level, at the right time, this review, if necessitated, will be undertaken. Well, given the fact that you're going to launch operations to recover weapons, uh, you might want to actually look at uh, the AFSPA. Okay. Oh, Right. No, that was for me. <laughs> I'm the one who's persisting with the questions. We got that wrong. Sorry about that, General Sam. Um, <clears throat> clearly, she, she wants you not to speak too much. <laughs> that wasn't from the government, I can tell you. Um, let's talk a little bit about Kashmir. Um, recent events in Pakistan have indicated that the country faces multiple sources of uh, extremism, and intolerance of diversity and dissent. And, and we've seen that play out. How do you think that's going to influence the other border state, the sensitive one, or region, Kashmir? Right, so like you mentioned, I think this violence that we have witnessed in the recent past is unprecedented. And it has actually further exacerbated the you know, economic situation that our Western neighbor it is in. And further as its impact, on uh, the situation along the line of control or in the hinterland, uh, you would recall that we have understanding between both the DGMOs of February 21 with respect to ceasefire. And it is currently holding, and I think that is uh, something which is good. Uh, as far as the infiltration levels are concerned, they have come down. There has been some focus of activities south of or in the southern region of Jammu and even uh, the plains region of Punjab. Actually. So that is something which uh, we have taken uh, note of. Otherwise, our readiness levels both on the LC as well as in the hinterland, I would say is again of a very good order. And uh, any attempt by the other side to re-strategize its strategy to deal with uh, through the proxy tanzims or proxy organizations, I think we are well prepared to deal with that kind of a situation. Well, General Sam, spate of targeted killings has continued. Most recently, a member of a circus troop, Deepu, was murdered in Anantnag. Why are they continuing? I think my, my assessment is that uh, there is an attempt by our Western adversary to give this a uh, view of a homegrown kind of an insurgency. Right? It is also to do with sensationalism and also to do with gaining visibility because that is what makes news. And I think this is the attempt as to why targeting of certain selected uh, community or selected, I would say, category of people is happening. But in the same breath, I would also mention that uh, I think the number of incidents 
have come down significantly and largely to the good synergy cooperation we have amongst all the security forces or agencies that are currently working in the state. We'll ask a couple of questions, uh, General Saab. We've seen planned attacks on army convoys on uh, April 20th in Punch on a smaller scale, of course, than Pulwama, and thank God for that. Five soldiers lost their lives. Was it a failure of intelligence? Well, as far as the situation in this area that you refer to is concerned, I think that is a cause of concern. And I mentioned because of our success in the valley region, perhaps there is an attempt to uh, activate this area, which uh, we have taken note of. And uh, we have undertaken a number of measures. One is, of course, some additional deployment or redeployment of forces. Second is to re-energize the intelligence network uh, to have or improve the level of coordination with all the other agencies who are operating there. Also use technology uh, and look at certain basic uh, level drills, practices, tactics that we have. So this incident uh, was an aberration, but I'm sure uh, we will get back and, uh, you know, all the uh, terrorists who are operating in this area, uh, we shall be able to identify and neutralize in due course. Because the opposition and the critics of the government say it was a security failure. A very quick response on that. Well, I don't think that's a fair comment. In a counterinsurgency on this kind of a situation, there will be, uh, it is for us to make sure that our drills, our procedures, our uh, all other uh, things that go into uh, prosecuting a co successful counter-terrorism operation uh, is of a very high order. So I would not classify it as a security Last problem. two questions. 